Would you allow your daughter, your 16-year-old daughter, to take the Greyhound by herself? Well, somebody did. And if it wasn't for this lady right here, your daughter wouldn't have made it back home. So if y'all see this video, y'all need to thank this lady 100%. Listen to all the stuff that this lady had to go through just to get this 16-year-old, this stranded 16-year-old on a Greyhound. Check out the story. Just one second. Before you even go ahead and watch the video, this is her page. I like to give shout outs now in the beginning. So check her out. If you want to go follow her page, this is how you can find her for more updates and stories about this topic. But for those who do not have the TikTok app, don't worry. I got you. Just watch this video to the end. And apparently Greyhound employees think it's funny to have a 16 year old girl downtown in Dallas by herself. So I'm with my friend. I'm on vacation in Dallas and me and my friend are walking through downtown Dallas and a young girl in her pajamas with a pillow and a blanket come up to us asking us for directions to the Greyhound. She's in tears telling us that somebody dropped her off at this Greyhound on Lamar Street and they end up telling her it was the wrong one and she needed to get to the other Greyhound. The other Greyhound was only four minutes away from where we were going. We end up getting to the Greyhound and the bus had left one minute before so she missed it. Her phone is not working, so she gives us her auntie's number to let her know that she didn't make the bus because the lady took her to the wrong place. So we tell her auntie, we're going to call customer service. We're going to see if they can get her the next bus and we'll take her to whichever one she needs to go to to catch that bus. So we call customer service and we talked to the bus driver who was like, who had just pulled up and was going somewhere else. And he was like, I would have took her on my bus. He was so nice. He was like, I would have took her if it wasn't for me going somewhere else. If I was going to Houston, I would let her on. He said, but most of those Greyhound people, especially the ones on Lamar, are not going to be the same way. They're going to say, oh, well, buy a new ticket. So he tries to call for us. We call and we end up getting in contact with uh, one of the customer service people. And they say, as a courtesy, we'll give you like a courtesy to get on the next bus at 555. Mind you, this is already like almost, this is already past five o'clock. They're like, at 555, you can get on the next bus to um, get, get her to Houston as a courtesy. So we hurry up and run back to our car and literally take her to this one on 205 Lamar Street. And as soon as we walk in, the bus is about to pull off and we're like, please, can they just wait and let her get on? And they're like, no, once it's pulling off, it's pulling off. So I go to the front desk and I explain to them, I said, hey, she had a courtesy ticket, but um, like they switched it over, but she couldn't get on the bus because we literally got over here as fast as we can. We are strangers, we don't know her. We're just trying to help her out. Literally, they were like, there's nothing we can do. And literally we're like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. Y'all can buy a new ticket or y'all can call customer service. So I was like, well, I just got off the phone with customer service. They said we could have the courtesy ticket. Is there any way we can switch it? No, you need to call customer service back. So I call customer service back and I ask him, I say, is there any way we can switch this over? We weren't able to make that one. And there's another one at seven. This is 555. There's another one at seven. She can easily get on there. Like, can we just, she didn't get to use the courtesy because she didn't get on the bus because y'all gave us a ticket that was the next one. And now... Like there's one more bus and I'm sure it's not full because none of these are clearly full. And so is there anything we can do? This 16 year old girl by herself has nowhere to go. She's trying to get to her family in Houston. So literally they're like, yeah, we gave you one. You're not getting another one. I was like, okay, can I talk to a supervisor then? They put us on the line with the supervisor. The supervisor is like, there's no way I can do that. Do you have any other questions? I said, ma'am, and she literally made me call the auntie. I called the auntie, added her on. The auntie was like, matter of fact, I didn't even, I didn't even approve this. I didn't even like confirm getting it changed or anything. You're not even asking the person who booked for this minor. You're literally letting me, a stranger, handle this. And they're switching stuff over. And when our actual auntie, the one who booked this, the one who she's trying to get to, calls John says, can, can we actually get the courtesy to be seven o'clock? They're like, oh, we already did it. And she's like, but y'all made it for the one that's 20 minutes after they called when you already know that they're at a different bus stop and have to go all the way to the next one. So the lady ends up, she's just so rude, has no idea what she's saying, keeps saying, oh, I understand. There was a whole language barrier, had no idea what she was talking about. How is she the supervisor? Doesn't even know what she's talking about. Acting like she cannot do anything about getting this 16-year-old girl a tickets changed.
So the lady on the phone, after 45 minutes, tells us we need to go back in here and ask these people. So I go back in. I say, hey, so this is the customer service lady on the phone. She's saying that she can't change the ticket. You guys have to. The customer service lady gets on the phone with them and literally says, yeah, I told her that we can't change the ticket. Are you joking? And so we kept asking, is there any solution? My friend is so calm. She's talking to them. She's really trying to find a solution. I'm literally sitting here like telling the lady at this point, you are useless. Y'all are all getting reported because this is so crazy. It's not even about policy. It's about principle. It's about having some freaking heart. Even the first bus driver was like, oh, it's a minor. I would have took her. Mind you, once again, I'm on vacation and have been with this girl since four o'clock trying to get her on this bus. So we're here. They're literally like, no, this is when I start snapping on these folks. Because I literally said, do y'all have any 16 year old kids? Do you have any kids, period? If so, I, I, I really hope that they don't end up stranded one day and somebody treat them like this. So at this point, they're like, there's nothing we can do other than she can buy another ticket. Does this 16 year old girl look like she can buy another ticket? So I'm literally like, buy another ticket when she didn't even use the ticket that is sitting right here that y'all know what happened. Y'all saw her walk out to the bus and it pulled off right in front of her. So I go off on these folks. At this point, no, I didn't even go off on these folks yet. At this point, I just came back to the car, tried to finish the conversation with the supervisor lady, Gladys, by the way. And I, I literally was like, okay, if there's nothing you can do, you can go. It's been 45 minutes and you keep sitting here and asking me if I have any other questions. You know what my question is. So, no, I don't have any other questions. So, I, I literally was like, you know what? Last resort is let's go see if the bus driver will accommodate the ticket. Like he said, some people will, some people won't. We walk through. The people at the thing come running out. Literally like, no, no, no. Y'all can't go out there. You can't get on this bus. You're not. She's not getting on this bus today. They run to the bus driver. No, no. Don't give any exceptions. She's not getting on this bus. Why are y'all so serious about a 60-year-old girl not getting on a bus? This is when I start snapping on the ass. This is when. This is when I was literally like, this is a 60-year-old girl trying to get on a bus home to her family. She has nowhere to stay tonight. Nowhere. And you want her to buy another ticket? So I literally go off on the ass. I'm literally like roasting the ass. Literally like, you know, but y'all some fucking weirdos. So they just laughing in my face like, ha ha, girl, whatever. You about to be a, a criminal trespassing, la la la. And I said, y'all really think it's funny that a 16, a child, a minor cannot get to her family. Y'all think that's funny. That just goes to show that you are miserable in your own life. Because to not accommodate that when you see strangers here trying to help her. I am on vacation and this is what I'm doing. Like be so for real. So we going back and forth. Basically, I walk outside. I tell my friend what's going on. She goes in there, talks to them, I guess, in a normal way, not like I'm talking right now, and tries to get through to them. The same shit I've been telling them since I walked in the first time, that she is a young girl. And guess what? The only, and Actually, the thing is, I tried to walk back in and buy her ticket. I said, you know what? I'll buy her ticket. There's still six more minutes before the bus leaves. Let's get her on this bus. Instead, they say, no, she can't even get on the bus because of you. What do I have to do with her? If y'all want to be mad at me, y'all can call the police on me. I don't care. Get the girl on the bus, bro. So my friend is like, let me just go in here and try to talk to them. Go talk to them nicely. Go talk to them normally and see if I can figure something out. So she comes back out a few minutes later and is like, they're going to let me buy your ticket, but it's not going to be until midnight. So the girl is like stressed like five hours here at this dirty bus stop by herself. And so she's like, yeah, they're going to let me pay for it. I'm, I talked to all these people. I got their names. They're going to watch after you. So the same people who was just laughing that she ain't got nowhere to go are the same people we supposed to trust to watch after her. Greyhound, please be so for real. So in, at the end of the day, I'm still paying for it. I'm just sending it to my friend because she can go in there and I can't. So she's going in there for me to go buy this girl a ticket that I just met on the street today to help her out. And these people decided to act like this with me. What, the, what is this world? Greyhound, what is your business? What is your business? Because I have never experienced customer service that bad from Gladys and from these folks inside of this building, every single one of them. There was only one security guard who came out being reasonable. Everybody else laughing in my face with no teeth, thinking it's funny that a 16-year-old girl can't get where she needs to be. This lady outside ends up coming up to me trying to help. Like, why are they not? What do, what do you have to do with this girl? Like, why are they not helping this and this and that? Everybody's looking. Everybody's like, what is going on? I'm trying to help this girl. And yes, it makes me mad.
It makes me extremely mad, which is why I don't want to bring no more kids into this world. Because this world is evil. People don't care about nothing. Not even themselves. Because clearly if you're missing all your teeth except one brown one, you don't care about yourself. People don't care about nothing. Because to laugh in somebody's face, laughing at me and that little girl face, because she can't get on the bus, is crazy. And then to sit here and play like y'all so nice when my friend come in here and try to talk to y'all just because y'all were trying to have so much pride and try to act so funny with me when I'm still buying this ticket and putting this girl on a, on a midnight bus to Houston. Greyhound. Woo! Count your days. I mean, y'all already got sold to Flix bus or whatever, but Flix bus, please, please be so for real. Bus driver who at least has a heart, unlike the rest of y'all. Listen, stop letting your children take the Greyhound. If you're not going to go with them or send somebody with them, do not allow your children to take the Greyhound. I took it one time when I went to college, and I'm telling you right now, it's like a, a different world. You're literally surviving on your own. You can oversleep and miss your whole bus, and you won't be able to get another bus until probably the next day, leaving you stranded at a diner or something like that. It happened to me before. So please, guys, please, parents, be very cautious when sending your minors on the Greyhound, all right? What do you guys think about this story? If you watched it this far, go ahead and hit that follow button. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Peace.